Fam, this is Gautam yeah, Das. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start yeah. in two minutes. Yes, it's so sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm there connected. Yes. Can you see me? I can see you, Mr. Das. Are okay. You, now, uh -huh, I, I, I can see you. Yes. Right. I think I am not. Um, yes, I am on Galaxy Seven on Seven okay. Prime. Okay. I'll just put up my name. So yeah, my my name shows Gautam Das Ewar. Yeah, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Prithu Raj, founder and publisher of Burnish Law Journal, and today we have very special guest Gautam Das. Sir. He's advocate on record in Supreme Court of India. Today we are organizing this workshop in association with. Bharti Vidya Peet New Law College, Pune. So before starting this, sir, please tell us something about yourself and then go ahead with your topic. Yep. Yes. I am Gautam Das. After completing my uh, legal education from Kull University, I came to Delhi in 1999. And after five years of my practice as a junior advocate with Mr. M. T. Siddiqui, who is from Kerala in no more. And then I joined an international uh, course in international law and diplomacy from ISIL, International Society for International Law. And having passed out in 2008, I started my career, law career, as a practicing lawyer in Supreme Court and various uh, law courts and high courts of India. And then in 2015, I passed this uh, examination of advocate on record, Supreme Court. Now, till uh, now, having spent almost 18 to 90 years as active practice in the field of law, I'm here in your portal, you know, sharing my experiences uh, in the trial of criminal trial and also specifically that we are facing the digitized world that we are in today and specifically the challenges and advantages of virtual courts. Thank you. I, I, I thank you, Varnish Law Journal, in association with Bharti Vidyapit, New Law College Pune, for giving me this opportunity to share my views on the subjects that is criminal trial, the advantages and challenges in the system of virtual courts. Am I audible? Excuse me. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, yes. Now, I understand that those who are going to hear me and watch me live on this, they are the Generation Y people, the students. They are the upcoming lawyers of our generations. I understand that telling those lawyers, those students, law students who comes to the college with a laptop, with uh, gadgets, with applications, all new uh, uh, advanced technology regarding virtual courts and new as technology would be too much for a person like me who is kind of challenged in the new digitalized world. As you all understand that digital world is not happen in these times of COVID. It has all has its inroads long back. And those countries who has had first this digital technology communications in their own respective field of life, like transportations, communications, and everyday life, they had faced all these challenges in those times. And as time passes, they went on to have stricter, robust uh, the, uh, systems to fight with the new age technological 
difficulties and challenges which comes up with the daily use of this digital and communications like social media and other forms of a digital world as you all understand we having taken over the system of legal uh, systems from british we had an old system adopting by a new india and now also when we talk of having virtual courts it is a new system a technology being faced with challenged by an old generations if you find those judges in the higher courts you would find all them more than 50s 60s in all putting them to a world of technology without infrastructure already established and without the support of easy access not only by them but by the new uh, litigants who just have a kind of a, 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 a android phone you cannot expect them to come up and have access to a kind of infrastructure of virtual courts we as a lawyer also faced different kind of challenges when we talk of storing of data then protecting it then filing in a e portal and then having presented it in a very time bound manner before the virtual courts we don't know about the kind of uh, 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 4g's 5g's that is to arrive but at this point in time just 10 days back i had a matter before chief justice of india and having fought the case for 2 to 3 minutes when the court was not interested to allow me uh, the matters and about to dismiss the matter i said my lord i would like to withdraw it and unfortunately the sound started resounding and the chief justice couldn't hear, hear me and it got dismissed without incorporation of very important rights of mine of withdrawing uh, the petitions to file before the appropriate forum so the kind of challenges that we have today it is not the internal part of the systems the internal part i say by mean that you store it you file it through an internal portal and then different kind of security systems for the records the digital records the challenges would be in the kind of external when people comes to a court they always expect a court to have discretions and reasoning and on an ai system artificial intelligence you cannot find the judges to have that kind of an access of a physical presence that is that happens in an open court and in case of external part of it that is all right when it comes to appearances and all my suggestions in a kind of a situations i think we because of this present covid situations we are a bit you know kind of hast in finding it in a situations that whether this virtual court would be a regular affairs i feel the kind of developments that we have had in post 2000 that is when the it act comes and it virtually transformed the kind of applications of at least the basic uh, if i am talking of the criminal trial the trial sections of the substantial law as well as the procedural law that is the indian penal court see criminal procedure court and evidence act the major thrust that it revolution has on the trial of the matters are on the evidence act because earlier the documents the evidences that we talk of in section 3 in ipc it was all documentary form it was never on a digital and electronic form and from this day onwards from 2000 onwards this incorporations of various digitalized evidence comes into being and supreme court and high court being the courts of records and have having uh, you know shown the path to the legislature as well as those part of uh, the situations where you have a lacuna in implementation of new as technology they have brought in 
by various uh, milestone judgments uh, regarding how the electronics form of evidence to be incorporated in the practice of and the implementation of system of law dispensation of justice now my my uh, area of uh, uh, lectures today would be that how in a physical courtroom the justice that is dispensed with to the all the litigants and also their representative that is the lawyer and in a virtual situation they are to face would be the advantages i would say saving of time and money that would be the immediate advantage then making the court accessible and to the dis disadvantaged and a person who is you know sitting somewhere in some other states and in not in a position to attend and in you know uh, requesting the courts the lawyers for a dates and all perhaps that time would be saved then the major part which this revolution this virtual courts will perhaps deal with we are a country of 135 crores and still counting and with more than 3 crores of cases pending in various courts i think the reducing the case loads would be a major thrust when it comes to digital and virtual courts there should be some start with civil company and other matters where at least evidence involved are documentary in nature and more complex and more expensive matter should also be taken by the virtual courts but not those matters where criminal uh, issues are involved there are offenses where the judges needs to see the uh, witnesses while being you know cross examinations in 159 of evidence act it says that the uh, uh, witness has to refresh his minds and now if you allow the witness to sit in his office or rooms or his house he will have all sorts of material in front of him to assist uh, to get assistance from that so the very purpose of refreshing of his minds will not be there and also the reasoning and discussions which the court apply immediately with seeing on an open court that will also be lacking and major which comes from the last public in india you despite you know having people mobile phones and all the real sense access to digital world the kind of changes that is taking place perhaps except people being involved in whatsapp and facebook not all those applications and those data protections and digital signature protections they are uh, you know kind of uh, all those communications personal private communications that is being that is to be protected people are not aware of it even those i would say the uh, new as people who are using it still they are not aware of what kind of an offense by way of you know venturing into someone's space a digital space they are doing it so in that case the trust of the public while and and the confidence in accepting that this kind of systems will really help them will be also a quest a study to be uh, looked into now once upon a time john henry wigman said this cross examination is the greatest legal engine ever invented for the discovery of truth now see the inability of the lawyers and you uh, if i am addressing all the students there then i would say you would actually if you would come out to practice on a virtual court you would really miss that art of cross examinations in an open court situations so now also there will be a situations where uh, in a, in a, in a case of uh, rape or sexual offenses you would find the complainant has been given a protections under 164 of cfpc to get their statement recorded before a magistrate so now that also will be hit when it comes to specifically criminal trial so my 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 understanding of this situations is that let us be not so hasty in uh, you know over ambitiously taking up this issue of virtual courts and 
getting either disheartened or excited about whether it will go on or whether it will have any effect or not yes as a lawyer perhaps the first part of the internal part of the implementation of digital life is always good because we used to have a lot of difficulty in uh, you know the hard copies and all which on being soft copies and being transformed into e filing on many other matters uh, has saved a lot of papers and also has saved a lot of men powers also the time of traveling to various places to obtain those documents and all i think there would be a moderately you know if we allow it to happen as it has been happening in 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 kind of couple of years i think we will definitely go and have a better uh, you know world when it comes to dispensation of justice through digitalized form that is virtual courts recently recently in 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 15th of march the chief justice of india due to covid announced that uh, some of the supreme court and high court would operate through virtual uh, mode and also uh, prior to that i i hope i think hyderabad high courts had already established virtual courts and recently uh, because of a lot of uh, lawyers and lawyers association bar council uh, of india having raised the issue whether uh, this is going to have some effect on uh, so those lawyers who are not so accustomed so you know uh, used to with this uh, digital world paris it will have some issues to them so that is why they are now come up with a statement i think justice chandrachur has come up with that that the backbone of our judiciary is open courts so that's not going to have any effect yes due to this corona issues they had to maintain two very important part one is to access to justice to all those people who actually are in need of some or the other issues like the uh, migrant issues and you would find in these days there are number of pil being filed because those who are equipped with a digital you know offices and all they are immediately filing a lot of matters and seeking a relief and are also getting a supreme court is so indulgent in uh, you know interfering with the government's various uh, projects and schemes and giving guidance on many other matters and the second one is social distancing because if you allow even now for some time due to uh, partial you know lifting of uh, lockdown so people are around and there are chances of this infections being grown so in a, in at a time when supreme court has come up with these two important factor for which the virtual court part has uh, arrived in our life and uh, i would say if i am really addressing those my would be uh, legal friends uh, who are going to practice in the field of law if not going into straight away to the corporate world i would say they would have a very good advantage another 2 3 years perhaps because you people have come to the college with laptops and all you have been put into different kind of applications where you do research and uh, prepare thesis and dissertations and also you are um, at times you are joining senior advocates and experienced advocates as intern and also as judicial um, interns uh, by having an exposure to many important cases i think for all of you it would be a good situations at the challenge is to to those who have passed at least 15 20 years with paper with using of papers and all and uh, so used to open courts they will really have some issues however i hope that uh, all of you should uh, always it's always said i i had one quote that whenever we have some challenges in the world where there is a will there is a way a need or problem encourages creative efforts to meet the need or solve the problem i would uh say rather i would say all of you to come up with uh, with new as technology there are securities issues data theft issues so all of you as uh, the legal experts in the coming uh, years you should come up with some suggestions because you are the generations who 
I have started with this digital world. So far as all of you, if starts finding some or the other ways, we all will save a lot of times and money and um, the infrastructural issues of the people and the access to justice would be too easy for those who are challenged till now to have that. Thank you. Any question, Ritu? Ritu, are you there? Ritu Raj? Ritu Raj, are anybody, you there? Anybody can ask, ma'am, if any question. Okay, my, so my, I, on behalf of everyone. My video actually is gone. Yeah, hello. Can you ah, hear yes. me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. Still the time the students are coming up with the questions. My basic question to you, sir, uh, would be, how best can you just put forward the role of uh, advocates in coming years towards this virtual course? I, I hope that, yes, I understand, uh, ma'am. I hope yeah. that the present day students, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, the present day students who are equipped with all sorts of digital, you know, know how and uh, uh, technological advancement in their own uh, you know kind of uh, studying and doing research and all perhaps they will be in a position to definitely bring in changes see as far as uh, uh, commercial courts as per as civil courts and important arbitrations and those matters relating to documents and digital world is concerned almost all in the field of law have accepted and agreed that yes, this is the time that digital courts, virtual courts to take over. But when it comes to the areas of criminal trial, perhaps there are challenges and rightly so, the people who are actively participating in criminal trial, those lawyers, they have raised the concern. I think that concern will be addressed. See, whenever we have troubles in front of us, we always comes out with some or the other solutions. Some solution comes with some strategy, with long years of research and all, and some solutions comes with the cropping up of challenge, like the, the time that we are facing today. Though we are virtually, uh, you know, advancing in our way in the inroads to uh, a virtual courts in the coming years, but due to these situations, this pandemic, perhaps we are getting a little bit more kind of, uh, you know, excited or rather proactive in discussing uh, and how to get accustomed with the virtual courts. I, I hope things will be improving. And But my one, uh, you know, uh, kind of experiences with these years, I always feel that despite uh, existence of virtual courts, thus open courts will always remain because we are not dealing with instruments we are being guided by instruments and infrastructure. We are dealing with humans. When any system deals with humans, the involvement of humans and interface with humans should always be encouraged and should always be there.
हाँ रेतु एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एनी व्यूअर्स फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट्स Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, yes. ma'am. Yeah, Ritu. Yes, yes. Anyone have any question? Yeah, there is a question from Kethika. Virtual courses are need of modern times, but how will senior generation lawyer cope with them? Cope up with them? Yes. If, if this question is to me. Yes. Yes. I would say, Kethika, thank you for uh, having asked these questions. i think i have to start with a different angle when we have our grandparents at home and when children are so accustomed to the games and all in the mobiles and they the children wants their father who is in america to talk to their grandparents i think it is the children who actually switched on the you know the the, the videos and all to their grandparents to talk to their father so it is always those interns those associates of older generations like you people who now would be finding this in the offices where you join you would always find uh, when i used to you know uh, before 5 years i used to you know brief our seniors it's always us who used to prepare seniors are there to present the case i think your time has come when you would pass out from your colleges i think it is you who will prepare the all this digi digital research you would find in seniors libraries nobody goes to their libraries today it is all those juniors and associates and interns they do the research in the mobiles i found the seniors in supreme courts some few days back they always sits in the uh, cham chambers and their interns and research associates they sends them in their mobile all those judgments the immediately on questioning so as far as the senior is concerned they have passed a certain age where they had to do all this research this troubles this uh, you know run around the courts now they are being associated helped and supported by a very young generation who are completely equipped with this uh, legal gadgets and everything's at their fingertips Uh, thank you sir there is a question on youtube uh, from yeah. rachita chavla sir how do you ensure privacy in cases of online hearing in cases yes that 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 was there that was there's that issue has come up the law commission has also been you know given a lot of suggestions in 2016 i i i suppose 2016 uh, when um, uh, ravi shankar prasad ji was given a lot of uh, you know uh, representations by various stakeholders including the mobile portals and uh, you know people public spirited people who wanted to protect the digital world all those social media portals i think a robust systems with the lines of uh, you know american and other country who in the past has had a lot of difficulty in a uh, hacking and uh, you know threat to the uh, you know great stores of digital data as in all that is coming up that is coming up uh, in our latest amendments the government of india is coming up with some new robust uh, you know uh, amendments 
to ITX. See, whenever I just just one sec, having uh, faced with the challenges of uh, cyber uh, crimes, as you know, we always have had the crime first and then response to it. I think there is one national team. Uh, I have had somewhere I've written down a national team which looks into it like CVI and all in crime scenes. There is a specific uh, national team on this uh, data hacking and also this uh, trouble with the data. I think that that is coming up. They are into it because it's a new as technology and new as crime. As you go by it, you, uh, you know, one by one, you address those issues in the form of crimes. And at times we need to be very, very cautious about opening up portals and, you know, uh, downloadings and all. We, that that issues will remain for some time till see every day you find we have a mobile phone some three months back and you find a second generation third generation fourth generation changes into it every now and then there are changes because the 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 the, uh, the mobile industry they also want the technological companies they also want to protect uh, the interest of the public who purchases their you know uh, instruments and digital uh, gadgets and all so that will always remain and will continue to fight it as it cropped up okay so the uh, there is a question from ansuman singh uh, what are the challenges you are facing uh, while dealing with the client in this lockdown period dealing with the clients yeah. see, uh, see as far as uh, i take it myself is concerned i think it's a little bit better in comparisons to my other friends because I have, with this period of time, I have traveled from low court to high court and Supreme Court. So when you settle in Supreme Court, perhaps you find some or the other case all over the India. You have developed some kind of a clientele in the form of low court lawyers because uh, the advocate and record, they are being briefed by high courts and low court lawyers. So there are issues, challenges for other friends of mine. I still have no issues because we ha I have at least had some 15 to 20 matters. Uh, three in Supreme Court, two in Chandigarh, Punjab and Chandigarh High Court, some in District Courts, Gurgaons and Delhi's also. But yes, there are challenges when it comes to connecting with the clients because they are all locked down. Despite having problems in the past, uh, facing currently and also major problems which comes during this is those people who had had loans from the banks, companies and individuals, they are facing tremendous difficult times. Yes, as far as me is concerned, it's all right. But I feel that majority of lawyers, they have a difficulty in these challenging times. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, there is a question on YouTube. Uh, Will artificial intelligence replace the legal field? I have already, uh, in answer to ma'am, I yeah. said that artificial intelligence will always help in the infrastructure where justice dispensation is there. It is always uh, a, a kind of an instrument as systems which saves the time, which saves the money, which saves the kind of data in the form of hard copies and all. But when it comes to open court hearing, it is straight away with human to human interface. I think that is where AI is not going to help. It is always an open court hearing that's going to help because people's trust, people's uh, you know confidence in justice dispensation comes only when people meet the lawyer, people meet the judges kind of in a physical uh, you know, atmosphere, not through uh, a system generated or instrument generated atmosphere. There is a question on YouTube by Abhimanyu Shwese, who cyber presence technology wises compared to India, but still not widely adopted use of virtual courts. Repeat, repeat, Mithraj. Yeah, uh, the question is, uh, countries like USA who, who have a stronger cyber presence 
technology wise as compared to india but still they are not adopted uh, use of virtual code yes because they they are more smarter they have all the brains from all over the world and they are putting them into use perhaps good sense with the brilliancy you know once i have been told that uh, the ceo of google, ceo of google's their their children have not been given a uh, mobile phones till they are 12 years or old or so so they despite having developed the equipment the infrastructure the uh, systems but when it comes to virtual codes I, that is that is why that is why uh, rituals we are discussing today why we are in this space we are in this space only because of this though we are taking the same help of digital world for discussing whether we are to uh, uh, you know implement we are to really you know have this virtual courts in operations when it comes to representing people before the court having access to general public to the courts we are help we are taking the help of same digital world so usa perhaps because of that having having you know uh, you know got all those know how but still usa you would find much of the cases in relations to data theft in relation to digital signatures uh, you know uh, uh, impersonations so having said that i would say that uh, india is yet to yet to come up with digital you know uh, transformations it is just a time when we are perhaps have to have all those systems on everything on a portal of digital you know system but when it comes to appearances and representing the people we need to have a physical you know space for the people question on youtube by aditya singh uh, sir in the era of pandemic will virtual courts will be no, uh, will be new normal yes that that, that that is the that is the questions we we need to understand because of this pandemic we are suddenly gone into a virtual mode i think this is the need of the hour. this was the need of the hour. the supreme court the chief justice said in 15th of march i think that was what he said that since the pandemic has arrived and this pandemic what is that it has done is kept all those people inside their home since it has actually a boon for talking for for implementation of virtual courts we are uh, you know uh, getting so faster into discussing virtual courts this has restricted the humanity at home so when people are at home still fighting for some of their rights how can they fight it unless we have a system in place and that is where the inroads of virtual courts has come i think this is uh, a timely one but but looking at if we see by december if we see that uh, the normalcy in covid uh, situations comes i think the normalcy in virtual courts will also come the kind of virtual courts the discussions and the operations we find today perhaps that will not be there uh, uh, there is if there is any question please ask the question Uh, please be louder. Kritesh Das, please be louder. If anyone have any questions, please ask or write down here only. there is a no, there is no more questions so i would like to invite uh, jwala ma'am for vote vote of thanks hello am i audible am i yes, uh, this is das will allow that me sunne anko bhi achu hello yes am i audible yes ma'am yeah. so uh, thank you so much uh, sir 
it was really nice insight into uh, this new topic actually virtual codes are really new concerns today so uh, good evening all my dear students and all the dignitaries on behalf of bharti vidyapeet jind university new york college pune i express my gratitude towards mr dasam dal advocate on record uh, supreme court of india for accepting our invite for this webinar in collaboration with burnish law journal so we are grateful to you uh, for inviting us uh, on this crucial topic today that is the virtual courts and answering all the questions uh, and queries of all students and of i believe that students tomorrow and the young generation tomorrow young advocates they focus on and what the traditional criminal uh, trial system to each criminal trial system in the coming year express my gratitude towards the founder of uh, banish law journal and my students for patient sharing thank you everyone thank you all stay safe stay healthy may i may, may oh. just have my my concluding uh, you know remarks Chituraj, please sir. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Burnes Law Journal and its team members, especially the moderator Rituraj and ma'am, and thank you all the students of Bharati Bharati Vidya Pitch New Law College Pune. I just can say that there are challenges created by permeation of society by the technology, but also greater opportunity. Unexpected. technological issues can crop up but we will all stand like in every time humanity faced with some challenges they comes out with some solution with flying colors i think we would win and not only in the covid situations but any kind of technological or otherwise any issues that comes we all will definitely come up with flying colors thank you very much thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity uh, and this digital space to share my views and thank you very much uh, thank, thank you sir for sharing uh, your times with us thank you bharti vidya page students teacher principal ma'am everyone for joining us thank you so much sir thank you everyone